Yeah, how are we doing, guys? Great. Good. Archery practice in here. <laughs> yeah. How is uh, when Jason Witten and you talked about him coming back, how is what he's done to this point this season? Has it kind of envisioned what you felt his role would be coming back and his level of performance? Yeah, I just think he's done a great job. You know, he's, he's the same guy uh, as, as a person, uh, same guy as a leader and, and as a player. And, uh, you know, we talked about him playing a little bit less uh, than he had in the past. He, he literally virtually took every snap when he was playing for all these years. And, you know, we want to keep these young tight ends involved. We want to use different personnel groups where he's not out there. But, you know, he's still he's played the majority of snaps for us at tight end. He's been a very good blocker. He's been very uh, dependable as a receiver. Uh, he's cashed in at different uh, times, scoring touchdowns for us early on. So he's been a very good player for us and really the same guy, very positive impact on the rest of our team. I think you said earlier in the week you'd kind of see how it went with Brandon Knight as the third tackle this week with Cam out. How's, how's he looked this week? Yeah, Brandon's done a good job, really, with all the opportunities we've given him. So, uh, you know, we'll see how that all plays out. How do you think your team has handled the, you know, you have the long layoff with the bye week and then you have the multiple practices outside, which you normally you don't do. Just how do you think that they've handled the practice this week? Yeah, I think our, our guys are fine. You know, they came back chomping at the bit. Uh, feels like it's been a long time since we've played. And I think uh, their effort and energy and practice indicates that. I mean, they've been into it completely engaged. And, you know, obviously there's plenty of stuff to clean up as we go. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's gotten better and better each day of practice. Devin Smith has been a guy we've seen doing some kickoff return on that. Do you think that he could potentially do that in, the, in a game in the near future? And is that just a way to kind of get him potentially on that 46? Yeah, you know, the challenge for a guy like Devin is, is having a role on special teams. And uh, he's done a good job when he's gotten opportunities on offense. Uh, but you have to have a role on the team uh, on game day. And uh, he continued to get better uh, as a team's player, and that's going to be a way for him to compete with some of the other guys uh, for getting one of those jerseys. Do you anticipate Van Der Esch to do any team things today in practice? Uh, if he practices uh, in the team, it'll be limited. Uh, he's getting better and better, so we just got to really take him day by day. And what to have a guy like Sean ready to jump in. I don't know if you'd be better suited to lose a guy at any other spot. Yeah, obviously Sean's played a lot of football for us and played at a very high level and is very smart. He's embraced his role uh, up to this point this year, but you know, one of his great strengths is versatility and he can play different spots. Joe Thomas can play different spots as well. Those guys have uh, been real positive factors for us up to this point. So uh, we're hopeful on, uh, on Leighton, uh, but we'll see how it goes the next couple of days. We've talked to y'all. I mean, you know, when Zeke came back from his holdout, y'all kind of had a plan for how to get him reacclimated. How's that different with a guy like Bennett? I mean, he hasn't been away from football necessarily, but he's new to this. And how does that work? I actually think it's a different situation because he has been playing. He's been in training camp. He's been playing for them and practicing for them. And so he's been physically active uh, playing against NFL players. Uh, the biggest thing for him is learning our system and how we do things. He has some familiarity with a system like ours in the past. So. Uh, it's detail, it's it's language, it's nuance, it's all of that stuff that he has to get caught up on. But uh, he's a smart guy and he's a smart football player. So he's done a good job the last couple of days in practice. When, I don't think it's happened in a while, but when the headsets go out offensively in the communication, how do you guys handle that? What, what's your protocol? Is it like receivers running in different plays? Is that going to the sideline? How do you guys go about if that were to happen? Yeah, there's a lot of different ways. I, I think the, the basic thing is the quarterback needs to be able to call plays uh, by himself out there, right? He needs to be able to function. So we work on those situations. Dak, you got it. Headsets are out. Go, you know. But but other ways are you come to the numbers, you communicate that way, you send a player in, you know. Hopefully over the course of time you get that cleaned up as you go. But you just have to be ready for those things. It becomes a little bit more old school. And, and how you do it. But, uh, you know, he's certainly comfortable and able to handle it. And then we have to handle it as coaches just to get the stuff in that we want to get in. Have you had that either your time as a player or as a coach with those things? Any kind of funny story or anything that's Oh, happened? yeah. I mean, the, the way we used to always do it was you literally run to the numbers. Tell me the play. And, you know, some people get panicked about that, but you just got to get you got to get it communicated. So the play's over. You get over here, give me the play. Okay, here we go. Just keep playing. And uh, you handle it that way. And if you want to use substitution, you know, have somebody, you know, run a play in. You can do that. That's really the old school way of doing it. Um, but you know, there there are simple ways to communicate. Uh, you know, we have hand signals and all of that. So you just have to be ready to use all of it. Zach told us that when Witten came back, he 
told him, we need you to be you, be vocal, not just on the field, but just that leadership. Did you have to have that conversation at all with Jason when he came back? Did, there's young leadership on this team that's growing, but we still need your presence. Uh, absolutely, and, and, and he's handled it really beautifully because he was such a great leader for us uh, before he left. And uh, you know, one of the really positive dynamics of our team last year was that you know, I think the younger players, the really good players, the guys have been playing a lot for us, realized that he no longer was there. And some other veteran players we had were no longer there. And they had to step into that void. And they embraced it as the year went on. And our team responded to them. And that's been a really positive thing, to empower those guys. But then Witt, Witt came back, and he's smart enough to recognize that dynamic. That's a positive thing. How do I fit myself back in? It's a different team than it was a couple of years ago. So uh, understand that you know it's important for him to have a voice, but uh, you know find your place as you go. Uh, but but at the end of it, make sure that you have a voice because uh, he's as credible a leader as we have on our team. He's fantastic, and the guys have so much respect for him. So I think he's done a great job recognizing the challenges and fitting himself in, and certainly the guys have embraced him. Zeke has been targeted less in the passing game out of the backfield this year compared to last year. How much of that is just the fabric of more weapons downfield? Or He's been targeted less. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, we love Zeke, as you know, and we want to get him the ball every way that we can because usually positive things happen for us. So handing it to him or throwing it to him. And he's such a capable receiver uh, out of the backfield when we line him up, uh, up in space, uh, in the formation, the line of scrimmage. He handles those situations well, and he's awfully good when you check it down to him. So we like him a lot. You know, I, I think your answer is the right one. You're getting the ball to other people. You know, I think that's a, that's a positive thing. When a lot of different guys are catching the football in the passing game, that's a good thing for your team. Thank you. All right. Thanks. See Thanks you guys. guys.